might have heard the story about the Queen Mother when she was waiting for her G&T, pre-lunch G&T one day, and it didn't arrive as planned. So she went exploring to find out why. And she went down to the kitchen area of Clarence House and she heard this furious argument going on between William Tallon and his then boyfriend. And she yelled down the stairs, when you two old queens have finished arguing, this old queen would like a drink. (laughs) So (laughs) I might have got that wrong, but it was along those lines. Anyway, Backstairs Billy is the book for book bits today. And it's really a delight. Now, William Tallon worked for the royals for over half a century. And he was essentially a servant, because back then that's what they used to be called, to the Queen Mother. But he ended up being her friend and confidant. Now, the history of their relationships form the basis of this book. But I'm just going to share a few little fun tidbits with you today. He was a creature of extremes. He was immensely loyal to his friends. For much of his life, he was driven by two demons, a powerful sex drive and an intense, almost pathological love for the Queen Mother. Billy always looked far too grand, too much of the commanding presence, to be described as a servant. His regal air extended to smiling and waving at the crowd, even on occasion stopping to engage in small talk as if he really was a member of the royal family. So you can see how far he went in 50 years. Now, the Queen Mother, as she got on in years, used to love to have people come for luncheons at Clarence House and they were quite renowned and she loved everyone to be entertaining and fun and free and she couldn't stand it when she'd sort of walk into a tense atmosphere where she'd have to try and get it going and when people started talking about the weather, she would literally roll her eyes. So William Teller knew that his task was to sort of do the social smoothing, to invite everybody in and to get them well lubricated before the Queen Mum entered the room. Now, even if he didn't drink, he used to be quite pushy. There were reports from guests that they would say that even if they put their hand over their drink, he would pour alcohol through their fingers like he would force them. And, um, you know, if someone said, oh, no, I don't drink, I'll just have a water or lemonade or something, he would give them the water or the lemonade, but then he would very determinedly place a glass of alcohol next to it and the message was drink up buddy. Now it's interesting that when the Queen Mother you know had had enough of her whatever luncheon uh, she would indicate that to Billy and I'll just read you this little bit. The Queen Mother would indicate that luncheon was over and Billy would appear behind her chair easing it out from under her. She would stand up and move towards the door where Billy would already be waiting to open it. The Queen Mother would wave airily and tell everyone to carry on as long as they liked and then Billy would see her out of the room. But returning to ensure the guests were given a short time to collect their thoughts and their things before being politely told it was time to go, they would then be escorted out of the building. And another little tidbit that's just gorgeous in this book is the fact that the Queen would be relaxing in her lounge room or what what would would be the drawing room, I guess. And um, William would, you know, help sort of tidy up. There were servants, other servants to do all the menial tasks, but he would be supervising. And uh, sometimes she would feel like company because she'd want to, you know, dissect the luncheon. She'd want to spill the tea with someone. So she'd call him in and he'd sit down and often have an after lunch tipple. There was lots of tipples. I mean, they had a grand old time at Clarence House and they would basically gossip about everyone that was at the lunch and what so-and-so said to so-and-so and and anything that the Queen Mother missed. (laughs) Backstairs, Billy would fill her in and uh, they'd have a lovely gossip. And sometimes when she was a little younger, they used to actually put music on and she would want him to dance with her. So, you know, it was a marvellous relationship. And I can tell that he just livened up her last years and was very much loved by her too. So the end of William Talon's life is actually quite sad and I'll just read you a little bit about that. 
By early 2007, Billy looked increasingly vulnerable and throughout that year, his health deteriorated rapidly. He'd been visited in March by Prince Charles after a spell in St Mary's Hospital in Paddington and Prince Charles was apparently shocked at his old friend's decline. And, you know, it's nice because we know that the then Prince Charles was just so close to the Queen Mother and it's just so nice that he did like William Tallon and got on with him because I think that would have made the Queen Mother very happy and it would have eased the way for her to have him such a close companion. So he was found dead in his flat on the 23rd of November 2007. The official cause of death was cardiac arrest, but he had been treated at an HIV clinic a few years earlier. Plus he drank really, really heavily. And it's interesting that it was reported that he was actually working on a book about the Queen Mum around the time of his death, but it was never found. And there were people seen entering his flat. It was described as young men, two or three young men. And uh, so evidently they cleared his flat of all evidence that could have uh, been uncomfortable for the royal family. That is the suggestion, but that's never been proved. But he pretty much just died of a broken heart too because I think he really missed the Queen Mother and he was quite sad as well. Um, around the time of her death, he was really sidelined and he was prevented from seeing her in the last few months before her death, which probably would have broken his heart, I would imagine. So that's the story of Backstairs Billy. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again very soon for another book bits.